I grew up in Salt Lake City, Utah. I took a degree from the University of Utah, uh, managed some stores for Safeway, and then ended up going to work for General Foods Corporation. I was asked to sit on the board of a small company that had been working on a technology for about 15 years. Numerous patents, a lot of research, and they were actually producing a product using salt and water. And when they told me that, uh, they wanted me to go on their board. I said, well, you're going to have to convince me that this is real. How can you produce something from salt and water? And they said, we have a lot of research, extensive research, 10 or $15 million worth of research. Virtus agreed to join the board of directors. So I went to the first board meeting and found out that they were flat out of money. They were a million dollars in debt. We said, let's see if we can help them find money. We tried for about 90 days, could not. Eventually, the company uh, folded, and they actually merged it with another company, an energy company. And when that happened, that company started selling off assets. And I said, I am going to put a group of investors together, and I'm going to take a run at the company. And over the course of a year, we discovered what the product was and why it worked. We developed what's called the mechanism of action. They discovered the product was based on redox biochemistry, a new field of science that emerged near the beginning of the 21st century. Redox signaling is a function central to all forms of life. Redox signaling molecules are created within every cell of the body and are vital to the immune system and to cellular repair and replace mechanisms. As one gets older, the body's ability to make these molecules decreases, a function of aging. The product provided a replenishing source of the exact redox signaling molecules the body creates, and in the same balance, enhancing cellular health. Knowing the product shelf life was essential, Virtus challenged a team of researchers, including Dr. Gary Samuelson, to find a way to stabilize the product. And finally, after months, he finally came in and said, I think I've got the product stabilized. And we started testing it and found out that he had, in fact, stabilized the product. After stabilization had been achieved, Virtus met with a group of university scientists. This is stabilized redox signaling molecules, both positive and negative molecules in the same bottle, stabilized. And they said, how in the world did you do this? So one of the big breakthroughs is the fact that we can stabilize molecules that are, you're not supposed to be able to do that. The molecules in the sea are supposed to be fleeting. They should all return to salt and water in just a matter of minutes, and they don't. So we decided to find 40 people and create kind of a focus group, and uh, we started giving it to them. Uh, we, we did that for about two months, and we said, let's go out and find out where we are with these 40 people. So when we went out and contacted them, we found out that the 40 people had turned into 135, and the product had been shipped to 20 different countries. We had contacted a, a friend, and he was running a very big pharmaceutical company in New Jersey, about $10, $11 billion. And he agreed to send a group of people out and spend some time with us and see what we had come up with. So four people flew out on a plane. We spread out all of the research that we had out on the table. They started getting on the phone about noon back east, and they kept doing that, and about two o'clock they walked in the room and said, uh, okay, we're convinced you've got something here, and it's significant enough that we will write you a check big enough that you won't want to talk to anybody else. And I said, what's the catch? And they said, you've got to shut it down. And I said, shut what down? And they said, you've got 135 people on this product right now, shut it down. People have problems all the time and they deal with them as best they can. You're going to have to walk away. And that kind of took us back a little bit. In fact, I said, I, that seems a little harsh to me. And they said, you want to work with us, you walk away. ASEA LLC opened its doors for business in July 2009 with just a handful of independent associates. Today, there are tens of thousands and their ranks are growing exponentially every month. In 2012, the company announced its entry into Europe, the first of many international steps to come. My wife questions why I'm doing this. She said, you've retired more than once and it's time for you to join me and let's enjoy the golden years, if you will. But one of my fondest memories is of a Meet a Sea meeting that we held in Lexington, Kentucky. 
uh, we had a huge group of people that came, very impressive group, and a lot of people coming up talking about what ASEA had done for them personally. But at the end of the meeting, they invited me to come up and gave me a small treasure chest. It wasn't very big, but as you open up the treasure chest, it's filled with letters of gratitude and thanks. It meant a great deal to me. So we came back to uh, Salt Lake City, and I asked <clears throat> our people to go out and find a treasure chest, which we have done, and uh, we have it in the office, and we continue to add letters to it.